Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how you can install Drupal on your AWS environment. So to do this, what you need, you need a database server with RDS, you need a web server with EC2, and you need a domain or a subdomain to point that web server to your subdomain. And later we will install SSL certificate using Let's Encrypt. So that's our whole approach. So let's get started. First, I am on my AWS console where I see the EC2 instance. We need a database server as well. So first, let's start creating the database server because it creates, it takes some time to create the database server. While its database server is creating, we can then continue parallel EC2 server setup. So um, in the services, I see RDS, click next. I open the RDS tab into a new uh, tab, RDS into a new tab. And from here, I'm going to create a new database. So uh, create a new database. Then uh, I will use MySQL and I want to do that using the free tier. So let's keep it free tier. Then I'm going to use MySQL 8, which is the latest version in MySQL. <coughs> then I'm going to give the name of dev database instance identifier. So let's give a name, um, Drupal, admin credentials, master username, let's add admin or Drupal admin user. And then for the password, let's use some strong password generator. We have some strong password generator. And then generate some passwords here. Copy the password. That's it. So password, confirm password. It's fine. The next, it's we need to choose T2 micro because we want to stay on the free tier. And we want to have auto scaling storage, but I want to set it on 21 because my server will not be that much big. Then uh, on connectivity, uh, we are on the VPC and then click here, additional connectivity. Just click here, public access, uh, yes, because if you wanted to use this from MySQL Workbench, you want to connect, then you need to public access. That's clear. Then uh, database port is fine, password authentication, additional configuration, we can just give a database name here. So. Drupal database that will be created when your instance is created. Everything else you can keep as the default. So let's go here. Enable auto minor version upgrade. Okay. Uh, delete. Protect deletion protection. Enable deletion protection. Mm -hmm. At this moment, I'm not going to click that because I'm going to just delete this RDS when my testing is done. But for production environment, I suggest you always check this off because then accidentally no one can delete that. Okay. So next go to the create database section. Okay. So uh, this takes around 10 minutes time to initialize the RTS and create those users, create the database, everything. While it is creating, let's go to configure our EC2. So I'm switching to EC2 tab, and here I have zero instances. Let's launch an instance. If you are recently uh, viewing this, you might see that Amazon Linux One has been uh, stopped. So, oh, just a moment. I have an internet issue, probably. Uh, let's see. moment it's fine let's see let's take a pause for a moment okay 
uh, I am here with resume recording and then you go to launch instance and uh, from here I will see all the possible AMIs you see you don't have Amazon Linux one anymore so they stopped serve providing new services for Amazon Linux one the existing instances they are using they will still provide support but you cannot get new Amazon Linux one you see only Amazon Linux two or maybe Ubuntu, Red Hat, Suse Linux, whatever you want, but Amazon Linux one is not available. So let's go here, click next. We want to stay within the free tier. That is our goal, because we want to set up everything within free tier. So we stay T2 micro, but for production, I would suggest you go for T3, T3 small, T3 medium, whatever it is, based on your requirement, but for now, we will start T2 micro. Next. So we keep everything as it is. I'm going to just choose an IAM role because um, SSM. And then uh, everything I keep as it is. And then I go to the next at storage. And tags. Just time to give a tag here. Project test. I'm going to test this project, so I just put the project text. But if it's production, you just give a name, project, and then project production name. Let's say pythonmama.com. So next, go to security groups. I already created a security groups previously. I'm going to use that, but it's simple. It is just port 80 and port 43 is open for everyone and port 22 is my ID. Click on launch. Everything is looks fine. Create launch. So I have already one existing key pair. I'm going to use that. If you don't have then just select this option create a new key pair. But I already have it. So I just use that. instances okay so it is going to uh, create a new instance for me and let's see um, here it is okay so it's taking some time while it's uh, initializing it's pending I just copy the public IP and create a subdomain so i need a subdomain to browse the uh, drupal site so i have a domain ssmtapes.com then i just add a subdomain here a record and i give it a name um, drupal and put the ip uh, i put five minutes and then that's it so now I'm, let's refresh, it's up and running. Now I'm going to go to services and then type systems manager, or I already have that systems manager. And uh, you can type it here as well, systems manager. And then open in a new tab. What I'm going to do with systems manager that I will connect to that instance using systems manager. I'm really comfortable with connecting with Systems Manager. With Putty, you need to uh, create PPK file, you need to get passwords, everything. But with Systems Manager, you don't need that. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to go to Session Manager, and after that, I will create a new session, which will uh, connect to that uh, instance that i have just created it's up and running i just uh, copy the instance id that's might be required if there is a lot of instances and you can filter it with instance id at this moment i only have one instance so that's pretty much obvious that i'm going to choose that one but if you have hundreds of instances and you want to connect with an instance you can do that by filtering with just clicking here and then click instance id equal and then paste it value press enter that's it you are here 
but I already have one, so obviously I will choose this one. Okay, then start session. Now my task is to set up Apache PHP and then create a virtual host, set up let's encrypt SSL. So these four taxes is my responsibilities. And to do this, I don't memorize all those commands. What I do, I just go to my uh, blog awspic.com and then search here. Uh, let's encrypt. <coughs> So this is my blog where I just provided all those good goodies to you. It's free. You just search and then uh, get the blog item over here. And let's see, you have search results here, the first one. How to set up let's encrypt the one the next two. This is what I need. So uh, what is let's encrypt? That's some definitions. Then the commands is given here with the code fill and if you wanted to do it quickly, you just copy the commands here. So this is copy, then I paste it. Okay, it is running. It is updating the yum. Let's go to the next command. So I have updated the yum. Then I'm going to enable PHP 7.4 with Amazon Linux extras. Okay, it's still doing, maybe take one or 30 seconds more. It is updating all those packages. That's AWS is managing. So it's good to update the YAM packages before you install anything on the server because you want to have the, all the latest things here. Okay, that's done. Let's clear the screen and paste it. Uh, enable PHP 7.4. So we enabled PHP 7.4, then we are going to clear the metadata. Paste it. Okay, clear. Then I'm going to uh, install uh, HTTPD, that is Apache, and mod SSL, this is for let's encrypt. Oh, sorry, this is for any uh, SSL certificate. So uh, that's uh, we have done it. Let's do it here again. So we have Apache server installed. Then we are going to install PHP and CLI PHP extensions. This is that. So it will install PHP and all those necessary PHP extensions. And we just need to install, these are basics. These are optional. If you want, you can install it. But I suggest you should install CT, MB stream, XML, DOM, and Opcache. So these are sometimes required for different uh, CMS or different applications. So let's clear the window, paste the command, just press enter. You see how easy it is. We just uh, press copy, paste, enter. That's it the screen okay so now what we have is uh, a PHP we have Apache that's good that's great let's see if it works fine copy and then paste it should show a welcome screen okay Probably DNS is not updated. Let's see if we can browse the IP. Oh, uh, sorry, I need to start. That's something I just forget. So I need to start the Apache server. Sudo uh, service. Uh, you can do HTTPD start. <coughs> this will start the Apache server. And then if you copy it, run it, it should show you this page. That means your Apache server setup is done. Okay. So I should update here. Then uh, we need to create a virtual host. How do we create that? It's simple. I just give it a link, open in a new tab. And then here I have provided 
all those necessary goodies. Just copy this line because we already covered those. So let's copy this line. And this is will open a virtual host config file in an edit mode. And then here is an example given. So this is just you can just copy here. You copy this, open in a notepad, paste it, then adjust the domain. So what is my domain? Um drupal.ssmtips.com. So let's just make it here. Drupal S M N tips.com server alias not required if you have like SSM tips and ww SSM tips you can analyze but at this moment it's not required document root um, let's just make that the folder name is all uh, and then here as well just put it full server info that keeps as well so you can keep it as well same then just copy this and paste it here it is as simple as it you just don't need to do anything you just uh, copy slightly edit paste it that's it we need to create a folder in this directory because we have documented part of the profile so let's do that cd for top, top, top. here we don't see drupal directory because we haven't created so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to uh, drupal.org and then from there uh, click the download button and then just click the right button here and copy the link address this will give you the link to download the zip file then I'm going to run it so do that we get that's it um, if I press enter it will download the zip file it is 42 mega let's check it is let's unzip it so do unzip unzip and press enter Okay, clear the screen. LS. So here I see there is a folder being created, Drupal-0907, whatever. Let's rename this to only Drupal. So so do MV Drupal to only Drupal. Okay, let's do LS and now you see you have a Drupal directory. Now put a file permission here. So do ch on. I just need to recursive to Drupal. Okay. Then I just need to restart the Apache server. Service HTTP restart. It will going to restart the Apache server and then. If I type here um, drupal.smtips.com, I will probably see. Yes, that's. I see this page, but it is still not secured. That means I need to install. Let's encrypt, right? How can I do that? Again, I go to AWS with a pick. I was here. This part is done. I close it. Then what I need to do is to enable. EPEL to install server. That's simple. You just copy to these two lines. Copy, paste, and press enter. That's it. It is as simple. Then you just uh, copy. Paste it. 
that's just going to ask you yes no yes press enter press yes again and you're done that's that's the point so you have now set up search bot i'm going to request a certificate now so you have installed the search bot which is the tool that requests ssl certificate and this is the process that i'm going to start so let me clear my screen and then i paste this okay it will ask me to give my email so I'll just give my at smtips.com thank you yes one okay so you have successfully installed the ssl certificate using let's and great now i'm going to check whether it works let's me refresh and it should automatically send me to the secure page and it does actually if you see the page url you have the lock icon which means it's secure it's good and if i uh, just see here certificate validity it's valid for next three months so we have installed a secured ssl certificate now i'm going to install drupal choose language english save and continue i just want to install standard one not minimal or demo standard maybe sometimes you can install demo as well but uh, let's choose the standard save and continue next um, it will ask for database credentials click on advanced options so now we are going to go to rts and see if our database is up and running and it is available status is available i go here and then i choose the copy the endpoint copy and um, go here paste it this is not local host anymore because we are using rts then um, database name is drupal that we have previously given database username is uh if you go to configurations what is the username that we have provided drupal admin user that's that then we just need uh, password right copy it paste the password save and continue that's it right so our database connection works fine okay uh one more thing if your database is not connected properly it, then you just need to go to check the security groups because um i already uh, connected my web server with the security groups from here so you see mysql aurora with the security group of the web server i just added for port 3306 if it's not connected you just need to go to edit inbound rules and then um, let me delete here i'll show you click here mysql and then from here you just type sg security group and then it will show all the security groups let's say i have web server that's the security group i selected when i create the instance let's choose here save the rule and that's it if you cannot connect to that uh, rds okay drupal is installing the cool thing is drupal is it's blue looks like facebook 
Drupal, Drupal is in the market for a long time, maybe more than 10 years, still didn't get the attention. Okay, so I just need to get the site name, uh, set some tips, info at smutips.com, username, uh, blah, 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 Drupal, password is, I just copy the same password. Because it doesn't matter, I will do the site anyway. Uh, region, I'm going to choose default time zone. All looks good. Save and continue. Okay, we are going to see the site soon. Yes, this is our site. See, we have our Drupal site up and running. We have SSL installed. I'm doing, just going to add a content here. I just add a content. Uh, let's see if it works fine. Article. Welcome summary. Okay. Basic HTML. Uh, full HTML. And then I just copy from here. Let's copy the content from here to here. Tags, no tag image, it's published, save. And you have it. You go to home. Welcome to Python Mama. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, so what we learned? How to create a new instance, how to create an RDS, how to set up Drupal in your uh, Amazon Linux 2, and how you can create new articles on Drupal. Now you have created your Drupal, you can change the appearance by installing a theme, you can have it, all those things over there, and uh, put some contents, make your website for corporate or blog. So I hope this will help you to get started with Drupal in AWS. And uh, if you need further help, you can always uh, contact me. Please subscribe to my channel to get this kind of uh, videos, tutorials, tips, tricks, and uh, wanted to know more about technology, then I will provide uh, daily videos in my channel. Thank you, thank you for watching, and have a nice day, bye.